it was mentioned that the exit audit was done uh, in one of the uh, my turns he made an accusation against me personally on a over a pickup and so forth uh, all of his accusations were found untrue in the audit and there was nothing everything that I had done was above and beyond the board. Uh, the next thing is he also Leanne Geyer asked the auditor whether there was any corruption and the auditors answered her question was no, there was no corruption. So that subject we should not hear anything about it anymore. But that's now, also, I just passed out here. This is part of his My Turn 6. <coughs> uh, I, it's on the, the second page of this. It's where now the punch. The council took it upon themselves and decided to award Jane Montgomery $25,000 of our tax money. The insurance company, Canfield, had no choice but to follow through and pay Jane 150000 And you read on down there, there's more uh, BS back and forth on it and everything. But I got attached here is uh, answer from Canfield and Associates, and it says attached, you will find the release, which I did not put in here that we discussed this morning. As you are aware, the case is settled for 175000 150000 was from the insurance company, 25000 from the city. The settlement was initially created by the city's insurance association of Washington. So everything in this my turn six is untrue. Uh, at this point right now, I believe that the mayor has missed a couple of words on this my turn. I believe it should say my turn to why because that's <laughs> what he has been doing on all of these and I, I'm tired of it and I'm going to keep calling him out and I'm going to keep presenting him. Thank you. Other reports from the council? Council Member Holt. I just have one comment, I'll tell you ask what the magic number is. The magic number is when we reduce this city by one asset, you get your police officers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Further reports from council members? All right, we'll move on. I think it's correct that we remove this manager form of government. Yes. Okay. So we'll move on to personnel. I'll keep it short because I don't want to be here any later than you guys do. Um, I was perusing my AWC um, newsletter that comes out, and I just wanted to touch upon a couple of legislative um, actions that are out there floating that you may not be aware, and I'd like to point them out to your attention. The first one is on establishing standards and requiring employers to offer paid sick leave. This is House Bill 1313, which sets minimum standards for how much sick leave and safe leave an employer must award to employees. Um, while this bill does not really apply to those who are working under the collective bargaining agreement, these agreements do have the potential to be reopened as an argument of fairness. So I just wanted to bring that bill forward. Again, that's House Bill 1313. AWC, by the way, does oppose this bill. The other one is um, classifications of independent contractors causes concern for the city or for cities. So this is House Bill 1440. And the House Labor and Workforce Development Committee heard this bill which addresses wage issues and classification of independent contractors. The language addresses the procedure for classifying workers as independent contractors and establishes a criminal regulatory and civil penalty framework, framework for incorrect classification. The bill can have a great impact on local governments. AWC is opposing this bill over concerns about the classification definitions. An entity in this bill could mean legal or engineering firms that cities often contract with. 
If this is the case, cities could become liable for wages and benefits for a substantial number of people. Again, AWC is opposing this bill, so you may want to keep an eye on that What's as it rolls number? through. It's House Bill 1440. Thank you. The last one that I wanted to bring forward is near and dear to my little heart, and that's public records request. <laughs> I know I'm an odd person. Um, this is House Bill 1128, and it's been moved forward after executive action by the House Local Government Committee, which met on February 8th. The committee adopted several amendments to the bill. The first section, which allows local government to enjoin a public records request, was amended. And um, I can hand it, or I can email this and send it to you. I don't want to read all of them. And then the second section, which allows local government to adopt a policy limiting the number of hours it devotes to public records requests, were passed with amendments as well. There's only two of them, so I'll read them, which is the removal of the requirement to post the salary schedule and age of all employees before adopting the policy, a policy, and changes the minimum amount of time a local government must spend on requests from five hours to 12 hours per month unless the local agency has no full-time staff. Council Member Geyer, I understand you're going to the Legislative Committee. I would ask that maybe you could clarify um, with the legislators what full-time staff, does that mean a full-time staff person dedicated to public records or just full-time staff in general? So, um, And then if you're, while you're there, if you happen to meet Representative Taco from Longview, it would be great if you could thank him for his hard work in this bill because he is the prime supporter. And then the last thing, um, I kind of notice on your committee things that if you ever come back to the council rules, could you keep in mind that I'm not just the personnel manager, I'm also the city clerk, and sometimes I do have city clerk issues that I'd like to bring forward just for information such as the public records request because that's not really a personnel issue. Thank you. Thank you. Question. <coughs> yeah, uh, oh, well, while we're on the subject of public records requests, uh, Council recently approved software to expedite public records request responses. Uh, has the mayor uh, agreed to the installation of that software yet? Yes, and that software was ordered. I received it this afternoon, and while we are speaking, it is doing its little job of converting the email um, as it exists today. They do have to go in after hours or over the weekend and convert all of the past email that's been sitting out there since they took over um, our IT services from Auburn, which was sometime in 2011. So um, I will be able to begin <coughs> either tomorrow or Wednesday to um, finish up those two large public records requests. Wonderful. Other questions? Councilmember Jones. Just curious, uh, how much of an impact has the, and I'm assuming it's one specific avenue of, for the public records request, and well, how much time has it been in? And um, last week, on just one of the two large public requests, requests before um, I got permission to order the the doc or the system, I had spent about six hours of one day um, researching six different personnel um, email folders that the IT department had downloaded into my email folder, and I have. <coughs> about 10 parameters, search words that I'm using, and you have to go through each of those employees or the personnel, each one, and ask the same questions for the dra for the deleted folder, the sent folder, and the inbox. <coughs> so um, it takes a lot of time, and then you have to sort them <coughs> as for potential litigation that they're exempt because of um, because of attorney con client contracts or client privilege information. You also, I also separate them out for um, potential third-party requester and then what I feel is disclosable. And I just kind of throw them in these folders that I have to go back later and really read them and look at what the letter asks for and then make my determination as to whether or not they're exempt. This do, um, the archival system that I software that I've, or the hard drive that has been ordered and is being installed will allow all of those discoverable records with those 12 parameters to be put out at one time. So I don't have to go through individual email boxes. I can just get them all at once. And so I'm only having to go through these things maybe once, maybe twice, but I'm not having to go through them five or six times. Further questions? How many pages have we given them? 3,000? 
Um, I know the first time you gave them about 800. 870. And how many was the second? Close to 1,000. Oh, yeah, I think you said it was almost 1,000, so we're at about 2,000 now. And I just sent them another 87 pages. Other questions? I can tell you, in my experience, in my daytime life, um, the full-time staff reference in House 1128 is for the organization as a whole, not just the okay. I figured as much, but I thought I'd ask. <laughs> and that will be clarified. Now. Okay, great. Thank you. But, thanks for <laughs> Other questions? All right, we will move on. Thank you. We'll move on to committees and board. Part four. Anybody here to report? Nothing to report. We'll move on. Public works. Seeing none. Civil service. On a great streak here. Planning commission. Skateboard. PCRC. SCA. And BRFA. Our board meeting this Thursday. Okay. On the other report. Uh, all right, any questions for the other report? I don't believe we have any public hearings tonight. We will discuss one. Uh, one item under old business, Councilmember Steiger. I believe you had added it to an item here. Yes, I did. I'd like to move that to workshop. Okay. Any objections to moving that to workshop? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What it is? Um, New business A, B, and C have been removed from the agenda, I believe. So we'll start with D, adoption of resolution number 2013-10. Um, <coughs> we have a staff report. Who's got that? That would be me. All right. Ken, come on up. No. So if it's all right with council, the way that we'll structure this tonight, we'll start with a staff report. Council will ask questions of the staff and then we'll start with motion. This is the one that we had. We had it for the wrong date. Um, all we need to do is change the date. So that's what the resolution is to reset it and reset it for new dates. So, you know, staff, staff coming, I believe. And the date is about the it's about the just the moratorium. Thank you. 
that. Is there anybody else who can agree with the council on the issue? I probably can. I don't have anything in front of me, but um, it's I'm not a do. <laughs> this, this was brought up um, the union members of the city, union employees of the city, the public works crew and the fire crew um, voted to increase the amount of uh, funds held from Seven, from 50 cents in the crew and 25 cents in the clerical, another 25 cents. And that, that's basically what this is about. Questions of Ken. Councilmember Jones. Uh, nothing of Ken. I was going to relate to the resolution statement. Because the statement he just made, is it 50, in fact, 50 cents from the public works? It's an increase of 25 cents. From 50 to 75. It's from 50 to 75 and from 25 okay. to 50. Okay, that's why I want to make sure of clarity. Because okay. yeah. I heard the 50 and I heard the 25 before. I'm looking at 25 cents. So. Okay. Other questions of Kent? <laughs> Is there a motion to be made? Move to approve resolution number 2013 11. Second. Yeah. Council Member Jones has moved. Council Member Putnam has seconded to approve resolution 2013 011. Council Member Jones. Uh, it's my understanding from the conversation with uh, our finance director that there is no cost, additional cost to the city. We already uh, monitor that uh, fund transfer, so all it is just minor modifications to increase that, that with removal. So. Yeah, this is simply the employees increasing the amount that they're voluntarily contributing to their separate pension through the Teamsters. Uh, no additional cost to the city. Congratulate the employees for having the foresight to uh, supplement their retirement. I wouldn't want to rely on Social Security on the current financial test. Oh. Further remarks from council? Seeing none, comments from the audience. And the motion before the council is a motion by Councilmember Jones, seconded by Councilmember Putnam to approve resolution number 2013-011, authorizing the mayor to execute a letter of understanding of Teamsters local number local, local union number 117, increasing employee contribution rates to pension trust fund. Roll call of council, please. Councilmember Putnam. Aye. Councilmember Steiger. Aye. Councilmember Walker. Aye. Councilmember Geyer. Aye. Councilmember Halsey. Aye. Councilmember
Councilmember Geyer, would you like to make some I'm remarks? sorry, I was just saying. <laughs> Councilmember Putnam, to speak to your second. Uh, following on this sometime soon, uh, do we intend to keep our existing negotiating team or should we be appointing a new negotiating team as well? Further comments from the council? I'm sorry, yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, basically, all this is is when we sat down and sat down at the collective bargaining table, we promised we would reopen the contract in um, spring of 2013. There were some public work issues as far as job descriptions that needed to be worked out and some other things. As you can see, this is here. Um, they also want to talk about the community services, the van driver, and um, also going to talk about the CDL. So if they wanted to in good faith on recognizing the CDL that we said we will have. We will look at the contract and we set a date for April 3rd. So the tentative date at 3 o'clock to start that so that we can move forward with the CDL. Further remarks from Council? Comments from the audience? Um, so motion before the council is a motion by Councilmember Jones, second by Councilmember Putnam, to approve resolution number 2013-012, authorizing the council president to execute a letter of understanding with Teamsters Local Union number 117, opening collective bargaining. Roll call to council, please. Councilmember Geyer? Aye. Councilmember Holcomb? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember McMahon? Aye. Councilmember Putnam? Aye. Councilmember Steiner? Aye. Councilmember Walker? Aye. We have a motion to cancel. Indeed it does. Next item on our list is item number G, adoption of resolution number 2013-013, authorizing the mayor to execute a preventative maintenance agreement with ACCO Engineering <coughs> Systems HVAC System. LT, is that you? Yes, it is. Come on up, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, sure. could I please uh, please talk about this uh, the mayor's assignment in light of what happened tonight? Uh, why don't we interject uh, mayor or mayor pro temp on both of those two? Because I have a feeling he's not going to be willing to sign anything that has anything to do with the police. Sounds like a motion for you to make it as soon as we get to that. Okay. Okay. Uh, this motion has to do. This resolution has to do with the uh, with uh, uh, a contract uh, agreement which we wish to enter into with uh, uh, ACO Engineering Systems. Uh, that was uh, uh, this is a vendor which is being utilized by the uh, regional fire authority uh, to maintain. Uh, furnace uh, air conditioning system that, uh, that's in the building that is shared by both the uh, fire department and the police department and uh, we wish to we wish to be consistent with their vendors uh, since we share that building and they use this vendor for their other buildings and uh, it would be a shared cost item. Questions of Lieutenant? Thank you. Is there a motion to be made? Everybody like make motion we approve resolution 2013-013 and we add to be signed by mayor or mayor pro tem. I believe that's got to be a second motion, a motion to amend. Is there a second on the second? Second. Mm -hmm. Am I correct on that? Okay. So the motion was by Council Member Steiger to approve resolution 2013-13. Second by Council Member Jones. And I believe now Council Member Steiger may be making a motion to amend. Hold there you go. And second by Council Member Holby. <coughs> if I understand it, the motion to amend is to amend the resolution to authorize the mayor or the who was it? Mayor pro tem or the mayor pro tem to sign the agreement. 
Is that a sufficient motion to change it, Ken? Okay. Councilmember Stagger, do you want to speak to your motion to amend? No. Okay. Councilmember Halsey on the motion to amend? Uh, I think that in the future, anything regarding the police department would need to have the police person within the resolution or on our program. Further comments from the council on the motion to amend? Comments from the audience on the motion to amend? The motion before the council is the motion by Councilmember Steiger to amend the resolution granting the Mayor Pro Tem authority to execute the agreement. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion to amend carries. We're back to the motion to approve it as amended by Councilmember Steiger, second by Councilmember Jones. Councilmember Steiger, speak to your motion. I have a motion. Councilmember Jones. Further comments from the council? Comments from the audience? Motion before the council. A motion by Councilmember Steiger, second by Councilmember Jones, as amended to adopt resolution 2013-013 authorizing the mayor or the mayor pro tem to execute a preventative maintenance agreement with ACPO engineered systems for HVAC. Roll call of council. Councilmember Halsey? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember McMahon? Aye. Councilmember Putnam? Aye. Councilmember Steiger? Aye. Councilmember Walker? Aye. Councilmember Geyer? Aye. Motion carries. Indeed it does. Next item is item number H, adoption of resolution 2013-014, authorizing the mayor to execute a lease agreement with Pacific Office Automation for Police Department Coffee. Lieutenant? Okay. Uh, with this resolution, our lease agreement is coming to an end if it has not yet ended with Coffee's Northwest. We wish to enter a new contract agreement with uh, Pacific Automation. Uh, there will be uh, a, a cost savings, and we believe that the service which they can provide will be as good, if not better, than, than the previous vendor that we had on Question. Mm -hmm. to approve resolution number 2013 Second. Councilmember Halsey has moved, and Councilmember Jones is seconded to approve resolution 2013 4 Councilmember Halsey? I move to amend to read Mayor or Mayor Pro Tem. I'll second. Councilmember Halsey has moved, and Councilmember Steiger has seconded to amend the resolution to authorize the Mayor or the Mayor Pro Tem to execute the agreement. Councilmember Halsey, to speak to your motion to amend. In light of the animosity that the Mayor has for the Police Department, I think it's appropriate that we have a motion. Councilmember Steiger. I go along with the Mayor. Further comments from the council on the motion to amend? Comments from the audience? The motion before the council is the, count, the motion by Councilmember Hall to second by Councilmember Steiger to amend the resolution to authorize the mayor or the mayor pro tem to sign the agreement. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The motion carries. Now before the council is the motion by Councilmember Halsey, second by Councilmember Jones. Uh, to approve resolution number 2013-014 as amended. Councilmember Halsey, to speak to your motion. Uh, I think it's very well covered. Councilmember Jones. It sounds like a good contract. The fact that the city is going to save approximately $64 a month is a good thing. So, move forward. Further remarks by Council? <coughs> uh, just to note on uh, procurement policy, this is on the uh, state contract. So it is uh, in compliance with our policy. Further comments? I have a question. I know, if I recall correctly, there was a, uh, a discussion about piggybacking this with the, what I'll call the administrative copier contract on in this building. Was that examined at all? Yes, this contract on this in this building is new, um, as of only a year ago, and so it's not up for renewal at this time. So it wasn't up. So it's not really an option. Got it. Thank you. Question before the council. Do we do audience comments? No. Comments from the audience on the motion as amended. Seeing none. Question before the council. The motion by Councilmember Holmes, second by Councilmember Jones, to approve resolution 2013-014 as amended to authorize the mayor or the mayor pro tem to execute a lease agreement. 
with specific office automation for complete department copier. Roll call of council. Council Member McMahon? Aye. Council Member Pentland? Aye. Council Member Steiger? Aye. Council Member Walker? Aye. Council Member Geyer? Aye. Council Member Halsey? Aye. Council Member Jones? Aye.